This is a quick video on exporting from SketchUp to Lightburn laser cutting software and the example I'm going to use is my simple Bluetooth amplifier and what I'm going to do to start with is I'm simply going to remove some of the layers that I have here um, and as I go through, whoops, I shouldn't have removed that one, the back is the one I actually want um, but I'm going to be removing all the bits and pieces in the front and that includes the dimensions but here. Yeah. So what I have, take away the switch, I have a back piece. And you can see it's in three dimensions and if I view it in three dimensions like this it's not useful to me in the laser cutter. The laser cutter doesn't quite understand. So what I need to do first is I'm going to go to my scenes menu and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to look at it firstly directly from the front. So I've got my front various angles, left, right, back. But even when I have a look here, you'll see that I can still see through this. I'm still seeing a three-dimensional view. So what I need to do is here it says perspective. I need to have, click on this so that it says parallel. And this gives me a proper two-dimensional view. There is no depth to it. I can see exactly what it is that I'm going to be seeing. And I can export this. So the key things are to pick your views. Um, it's no point me looking at it from the side. It's no point me looking at it from the front top. I can look at it from the front and I can laser cut that and that would work just fine. Um, I could of course also look at it from the back and I'll show you that in a minute. I'll just note this little notch here. This is the back piece but I'm looking at it from the inside so basically from the front of the speaker. If I look at it from the back you'll see that switches around and what I have here is something extra. In fact, there's a little bit more that SketchUp isn't showing us correctly. I've done some extra text, and I'm going to not only cut this back, but I'm going to engrave it at the same time. Now, SketchUp's not behaving terribly well at the moment, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a standard scene that I have created. And this scene gives me my layout of my back. You will see that I am in parallel perspective, parallel projection. I am looking at it from the back view, which is how I managed to get this. And I do have some dimensions here, which is for documentation purposes, and I don't want to show that in my export. So I'm going to switch off that layer. So now I have my back proper uh, parallel projection, two-dimensional view, and I have some extra information on this here. What I'm going to be doing now is I do need to save my, di my um, file, my model. And once that's saved, I'm going to be... Wait, 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 wait. There we go. Uh, so what I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to go down to the menu here. I'm going to use, go to Export. I'm going to drag across. Now you can't click, unfortunately, so if you just get it slightly wrong, you're going to have to do it again. So I'm going to come here to DXF, which is an AutoCAD ver um, file format. Let's try that again. And I'm going to go to Two Dimensions. Now, I do need to try and get that out at full scale, so I'm going to click this. It will only allow you to do full scale, to tick that button, if you are in parallel projection. If you're still in perspective projection, it doesn't seem to allow you to tick this. So that's a bit of a clue that something's gone wrong. I want to export it in full scale. I'm not going to change any of the other settings. I probably could, uh, but I don't find I need to. I'm simply going to export what I have here, and then I'm going to click the button Export. And this says it's packaging geometry. And it should say sending model. The other processing to do this conversion to a, a DXF file is actually done online. It's not done on your computer. So it sends it off. It tells you starting conversion. And then you basically go away and wait. Now, if it's a fairly simple conversion, it shouldn't take too long. And it will tell you your export has been started. And hopefully within a very short period of time, you'll get a pop-up here that says your export has been completed. Um, if it does, we'll download from there. So right now I'm going to just talk you through. There we go. I can click on, if you see this, you can click on download. There's also a button there that says view exports, but I can show you this. And so what you can do here is you can come and you can download um, your file. And we're going to turn that into Save that off to there, um, and I'm going to hit save. That's it. 
it's on your machine. You've done what you need to do in SketchUp and you can go away and do it. Now, if you didn't catch that little green button and you need to be able to find that again, what you do is you come over here to the three bars, you open this menu, and here you'll have your imports and exports. And when you come here, you'll see I've done a few of them, but the one I've done now is this basic export here, and I can download it again. Or I can go through and I can uh, delete um, files that I want from here and manage it. It will expire within a number of days and clean itself up. So you don't have to manage this continuously. You can let it go. If you don't get to it quick enough, it's gone. You don't have to do it again. But there it is. There's the item on my list and I can download it again if I didn't hit that green button to start with. So that's what I've done in SketchUp. If I want to go back to my drawing, I can click on this arrow here and I'm back here. That's the SketchUp part completed. So now what I do is I go across to Lightbone and I'm going to have to import this file. So I've come up with a new um, cut file. I've opened uh, Lightbone from scratch or otherwise I've hit new. Now what I have to do is I have to import and I'm going to have to navigate to where my file, where my file is saved. And we call that in year 10 speakers and it's under st um, student work. And we should have a DXF file, which is that one there, and we have that file. Now, if I click on this, you will notice that my dimension is 236 by 140. And if you remember from earlier, that is the dimension of it. So this is the correct size. I cannot just go ahead and cut this at this stage because there are a few things I still need to do. One thing that happens is it gets imported as a group. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to ungroup that. The reason why is because when I do my cutting, I want to cut the shape out, I want to cut these holes out, but this texture I don't want to cut, I want to engrave. And the way laser cutter works is it works with different layers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep the engraving on my top layer, which is black, and these work with these colors here. So I'm going to use the black layer as my engraving layer. I'm going to cut my circles, I'm just going to highlight those. I'm going to highlight those, I'm going to highlight that, and that. So these little circles here, I'm going to shift across onto my blue layer. And the actual rectangle, I'm going to shift across onto my red layer. Now what that means is that when the laser cutter comes, it's first going to process everything that's on the black layer, then it's going to process everything that's on the blue layer, then it's going to process everything on the red layer. And I do the two cuts separately so that what I do not have is any movement after I've done the cut. I don't want to cut this square out and have it move before I cut the little um, shapes that I've done in blue. So I've got those on separate layers, but they're going to be identically processed in terms of how I do my cutting. So now what I need to do is I need to come across, um, typically the laser software will actually have this showing here, but you'll come across to your laser, your library. And what I have to do is I have to come across, I'm on this top layer here and I need to engrave it. Well, firstly, my back is going to be made out of plywood and it's going to be three millimeters thick. This is engraving, and engraving in terms of the uh, laser cutter software, what I'm going to be doing here is called scan, and here you'll see it comes up with fill, but I'm going to select scan here, and I'm going to hit assign to layer, and now this here says fill. Now fill and scan and the laser cutter software are pretty much the same thing. It knows about it being three millimeters, it sent that there, so it's at a speed of 33.3 of millimeters, and a power of 70%. And this is going to scan that and give me an engraving here. I'm going to come across to my next layer here, which is blue. This one I want to cut, and I'm going to assign to layer. And this one here, I'm going to come here, and I'm going to cut, and I'm going to assign to layer. And on both of those, you can see the speed is much slower, and I'm up at 100%. And in these cases here, I'm doing one pass, whereas on the, or two passes, sorry, whereas in this layer here, I'm only doing one pass. Now one thing I want to remember, whenever you're doing fill, it's a good idea to double click on this. And there's a little setting here that says flood fill scanning. I'm going to suggest you turn that on to green. It just speeds things up a little bit. Uh, I'm not going to go into the details of that right now. So at this stage, I've managed to set up a cut file. I've chosen my order of cutting and engraving. I've set that up by making my order of my um, layers here. If I had got it wrong, by the way, if I wanted to change it, I could use these arrows to move the layers up and down in terms of changing the cut sequence. All right, and this is where I'm going to be doing. 
The final thing I need to be doing is I need to work out where I'm going to put my piece of wood and where I'm going to engrave. Now, I've got the laser cutter set up that we can put a piece of wood right down here on the origin on zero, zero. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select everything. I'm going to select this bottom corner here. And then I'm going to set my X position to zero and my Y position to zero. Now at this point, I have something that's going to be cut and that should actually work. I place my piece of wood kind of in the bottom corner of the laser cutter. I load up this file and I can put in the run the laser cutter. It just means I come to lasers now and I hit start and the job should work. That should give you the entire job of exporting from a SketchUp drawing through to the laser cutting. Final thing just to show you, as a check, I have my little preview here. I can bring up that preview window, except that it's not showing, so it is got a problem on this setup that I have here. So we're not going to show that. There we go, and that's causing an error. So don't worry about that. We can show that, we can have a look at it, but we would be able to hit start and the laser would be able to run. Uh, and that's the entire process of exporting from SketchUp through to a laser cut. And I hope that is helpful.